I mean, this is our 50th anniversary. How often is that going to happen? Never again. It's a one time a thing. As we approach the golden anniversary of TCR, we found a kindred spirit celebrating the same milestone. Like us, James Dick loves small, out-of-the-way places. Like us, he's had one singular focus for half a century, and in that time, he turned a rolling pasture outside of Round Top into a true Texas treasure. I think we have a wonderful mission here to train young artists to be part of their world and to be contributive to their world. You know, we have alumni now on six continents. This is the Round Top Festival Institute, an internationally acclaimed center for classical music study. Through workshops, artist residencies, and music festivals, James has been building up their campus and their reputation since 1971. It all started when this young concert pianist had a chance encounter with the First Lady of Texas. My teacher was a very, very good friend of a prominent woman named Ima Hogg. And she invited the two of us to have lunch with her one day when she was still living at Bayou Ben. And I just happened to bring up, or she asked what I was going to be doing now that I'm back from studying in Europe. I said, well, I'm going to be touring as always, but the summers I'm thinking about teaching somewhere. She said, well, have you ever heard of Round Top? The rolling hills and rural countrysides of central Texas reminded James of Central Europe, where composers like Beethoven and Debussy drew their inspiration. He founded his music institute on this spot and set out to make the architecture at Festival Hill a little slice of Europe resting in Texas. It's how James caught our attention more than 25 years ago. The wonderful thing about all the people working here, they're all good friends. They work together well. We look at things and talk about things together, come up with ideas. And we have some wonderful people right from this area who are creating so much of this architecture. And I'm grateful that uh, our local friends here are helping with all of this work too. Yep, this is our encore visit to Festival Hill. We were first here in 1995 when we stumbled upon the opening notes to a larger than life idea. These folks had begun to build by themselves a world-class, European-inspired, 1,000-seat concert hall in a town of under a hundred people. When we last visited with you, it was more than 25 years ago. Where it, does time go? You were building this. There was well, dust flying, there were drills and saws and hammers. Well, that's how it happens. <laughs> you built this yourselves. Well, a wonderful crew, still do, and we built everything here except I think the columns on the, on the uh, stage, we had to have those made special because we didn't have the equipment to do such long, long saws. But everything else, I mean, tens of thousands of pieces of wood, we have some wonderful octagons in the ceiling, of which it's a great example of marquetry because there are 94 individual pieces of wood put into each one of those stars. Mm -hmm. 
And with Handel's Messiah as our witness, this concert hall was well worth the wait. Majestic ceilings and heavenly acoustics make this venue a world-class destination for classical musicians, especially those who've never been to such a remote, tranquil place. It's all a part of James's mission to strike a chord in the hearts of young artists. I think their, their opportunity to be in a rural area, unlike Conservatory in New York or Philadelphia or Los Angeles or San Francisco, which is very, very important for their study as well. But I think the idea of, of being in a human scale environment, I mean, isn't that what Beethoven and Mozart and Schubert and all the great artists, Van Gogh, everyone, I mean, they were all part of a very human enterprise of life. So I think musicians uh, are very, very grateful and needing that kind of experience, even if it's just for a summer. Sometimes it takes a risk, an idea so preposterous that it straddles the line of revolutionary. Others may have called James Dick crazy when he decided to build a concert hall in a cow pasture. But years from now, the next Chopin might be resting on the seat of a Steinway, all thanks to one man planting the seed. Festival Institute is his magnum opus, and it proves that no dream is ever too big to blossom. It makes me very thrilled that some of us had the gumption to stick with it. How happy are you with all of this? I truly am. I sometimes just wonder how on earth did it ever happen? I, I'm just overwhelmed, maybe. <laughs> overwhelmed by what all that put together can be done. Thanks for hopping in and traveling with us. Now click the subscribe button for more videos like the one you just saw.